A safety expert is accusing the Accra Metropolitan Assembly for neglecting its duties to check flats in Accra as the rain sets in again. This follows a warning by NADMO of imminent flooding in Tama Community 5 as private developers fill the Sakumono Lagoon with gravels in order to reclaim the wetlands for building. The flats come. It's going to get worse. It also comes as the country approaches one year of the June 3 disaster that perished over 300 people. Mm, yeah, we are afraid that it can happen again. So how safe is the country as the rain sets in? How heavy will the rains be this year? What education is NADMO and other stakeholders giving to the public? What has the AMA done so far to avert a possible disaster this year? We'll be hearing from the Metro Department, NADMO plus a safety expert. This is today's big story. My name is Aishi Brian. Like to die. That's what makes me afraid. Last year's course of residents slept in open places after they were displaced by flood. Now, Joy News Quete Nata reports that some erected structures have begun feeling the pinch with the onset of the rains. We can all listen to the Tema Nadmo Chief Executive, Isaac Shai Odamtim, who feels Tema Community 5, for instance, is at risk in the event of any heavy rain. We are very, very concerned. We are concerned for two reasons. One, the fact that human lives are at stake in this exercise. And two, the fact that we have a collective responsibility to protect the Ramsar. The Ramsar is an important uh, ecological site for all of us, not only for migrating birds, but also for the fact that the place holds water um, during the rainy season. The low-lying area of our community takes water from Ibri Mountains, Adenta, Ashaiman, and so the rate at which we see people filling and depositing building debris into the Ramsar area just for them to reclaim land is worrying, and it has come to our attention. What we have done is to now map, map out the Ramsar site and identify the reservation along the Ramsar and see all the encroachers. Already we've done that in the eastern side. Very soon you would see the assembly grading the precincts of the Ramsar and that is going to be the starting point. But of course it's a worrying development because when the floods come it's going to get worse because once you fill the low-lying areas you're pushing the water into the, uh, the other parts of the town. The medium to yeah, immediate to medium term should be a critical look at desilting the Sakumon Lagoon so that it will increase its water holding capacity. But with the onset of the rains, the prayer of residents living along the Ramza side at flats never to return to their homes. For Joy News, Kwetenate, Tema. So Kwetenate was the one who had this interview with the chief executive. But in four days, I mean four days from now, we will be remembering the over 200 people who perished in the country's worst disaster, the Accra floods and fire. Now, June 3 marks the anniversary of that disaster. So we can listen to some victims who say the incident is still fresh in their minds. Before we listen to them, let me speak with Mr. Potafi, who heads the Accra Metro. Good evening to you, sir. Thanks for your time on today's big story. Hello, Mr. Potafi. Good evening to you. Thanks for your time on today's big story. Hello, Mr. Potafi. Hello. Good evening to you. You are on today's big story. Good evening. So how does the rainfall for this season look like? Uh, should we expect more or less? Yes, um, the month we are entering is the peak of the rainfall for the coastal and the middle bed currently. 
and it looks as if we are just about a day or two to get into the the, the June, and that is where we get a lot of rain. So, any special precautions or warning to the public? Yes, it's very necessary. Um, you know, because um, the the intervals between the rainy days may increase this season. May increase when we are getting to June. It means when it rains first day, second day, and it rains again, then it means the ground is becoming flooded, um, waterlogged, and the runoff will be coming heavier than what we expect or what we saw. Uh, last uh, week or last two weeks. So we need to be able to distill the gases and remove all objects that are on the waterway. Also, we also make sure that those of us who are on the low land areas, that our house our, and our environment are getting flooded, we need to move out before anything happens. And when we get out of our homes, we need to be cautious and listen to the weather. Because at certain times, we may not know. By the time you get to the place, it's flooded already. And we believe when we do all these things, it will help us seriously. So, so what we are going to do is um, we will be liaising with the NADBO. What we do now currently is any warning at all that comes, we give it to the NADBO and some of the media houses. So we'll be playing with the media houses also. This year, we'll make sure that we, if we expect flooding in certain areas, the NADBO people know, they know the flash areas, will be able to advise the public and they should always listen and go by it and uh, it will be okay for us. So how frequent should we expect uh, information or alerts from the Metro Department? Oh, currently our alert system is always working. Whenever we see a system coming, we will immediately issue a weather, we call it weather warning. And we circulate this to almost all the media houses with NADBO, as, NADBO and police as a special case. And then NADBO, what they do is that the moment we give it to them, they have radio stations all around the country, and then they give it to their operation room, ops room, and then they carry it on. So we'll make sure that whatever will come down will be added, we'll issue it without warning. Well, many thanks to you, Mr. Putafi. We're really grateful for your time on today's big story. Let's now listen to victims of last year's disaster, June 3 disaster, who uh, still feel uh, that the incident is still fresh in their minds. Uh, Francis Aban caught up with them. You've put on a, a bit of weight, haven't you? Yes. Really? Is that a sign that you've been eating well? You have, eh? Has something changed about you? No. Are you pregnant? Yeah, I'm pregnant. You are? How many months is it? Four months. Okay. You don't you don't look happy telling me you're pregnant. Why? Because of the fire disaster that happened last week. Okay. Were you pregnant before then? Or was no, after? I wasn't pregnant. Okay. 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 But you should be happy. You you are not. Why? Actually, this was we are afraid of what happens they wanted to, according to the people here they said they wanted to sow this place so okay so your worry now is where you sleep mm -hmm. because if they sell off this property you will not have a place to sleep so, right. okay that's difficult that's difficult but the one who got you pregnant will take you away wouldn't he hmm? why well, he's not around you don't know where he is do you know him mm -hmm. you don't know him do you work now? No, okay, I got uh, actually when I got a job at a place, the woman is uh, she's she's called Mercy and she has helping Mercy catering system. My mom used to go and help and she would give me a day, five C D a day. Mm -hmm. But right now I'm stuck. Why? Mm -hmm. The money is not enough? And then the money is not enough. Uh, you just told or you, or you had a fight with Mercy? No, I don't have a no, no, no. so, do you think what happened last year can happen again? Mm, yeah, we are afraid that it can happen again. Why? What What makes you feel so sure that it can happen again? Mm, because of the how it rains and and we have that this this house will be so, will so this place so and maybe if they can help us look for another place to stay. I want to move from this place to go and stay at another place. 
Mr. Daniel Mensah is the father of Afi. He lost all his belongings to the disaster last year, and the 65-year-old now works two jobs to survive, In a, very difficult a real estate agent uh, and a barber. I used to go up and down. You know, you know, it's a cry. You can sit down and leave. You see. So I used to do one to one to uh, for my whole living. Where one to one to means what? What did you used to do? My business. You know, sometimes uh, I used to find room for people. Uh, you are an agent. An agent. Mm -hmm. What else? Sometimes barbering. I see. I was a barber during my youth. So uh, these old men, all the time, they do come again. They come to you. Yeah. Since then, have you been comfortable? Is, is your life better now? Oh, no, you know, we are, it, it is a very bad for us. So we are only waiting. Maybe something can happen. Yeah, we don't know. So. Are you still waiting? Because it's, it's, it's been a year that the disaster has happened. One will have imagined that you will have moved on by now. We all, we, can, we, we depend upon God. So I say the change will come from God. Sitting at the entrance of the charred compound house is the 19-year-old young and ambitious John. Peeling open piles of plain polythene bags, he recalls how that fateful night has affected his life for the worst. I didn't feel any happy at all, my heart. Did you lose a friend? Mm, no, but I, I make I know one of my friends which like his face and his hand got bent. And I said I told him that so far as we are alive, we will give thanks to God. Well, we've been trying to reach General Brigadier General Sanzeri, not more coordinator. We'll try and get him, but right now we have Ajia Zainab. She's also coordinator for Tema, uh, and she works with NADMO. Good evening to you, Hajia. Thanks for your time on today's big story. Good evening, and good evening to your uh, Hajia, we are getting indications that it's not only Tema Community 5 that is at risk uh, if uh, the rains come in, uh, but we're told that the whole of Accra and other regions could also get flooded if the, if the event of any heavy rain. So what's NADMO's expectations of rains this year? Um, um, I am sorry, I could, I could only speak to <laughs> the issue that regards to Tema. So if uh, I can be limited to speak to the issue regards to Tema, I would have been happy. Well, well but, but your role generally is to manage disasters. So um, let's say in, in your area, for instance, what programs have you put in place to, to check uh, in the event of any disaster or to prevent any disaster from occurring this, this year? Yes. Um, in a situation like that, when it's a training season, one of the measures that we put in place is to identify the flood prone areas that we know already and to sensitize the public. And we also uh, make sure that uh, when we identify any looming danger uh, to the community, we also notify the, the appropriate uh, agencies to take measures to put in place. Well, Hajia, many thanks to you for your time on today's big story. I've been speaking with Hajia Zainab. She's coordinator uh, for Tema. She works with NADMO. Uh, we'll be trying to get Brigadier General Sanziri to also throw more light on that. On the other phone line is Nana Amihir. He's a safety expert. Good evening to you. We are grateful for your time on today's big story. Good evening to your cherished listeners. Nana, from your checks, does it look like we've prepared enough against disasters like the one we had last year? Uh, your line is not too clever. I, I didn't get what you said. I'm saying that from where you sit, do you see that we've prepared enough uh, to prevent any uh, disaster like the one we had last year? Well, prepared? <laughs> I don't know what preparation. If there's, there is any preparation, you would have seen it, seen it on the ground. I mean, as far as where, where, where I sit, I haven't seen anything, any intervention, no preventative programs that have been put in place since the disaster last year. 
So what, what were you expecting? What are your expectations of, for instance, authorities to prepare well, for this season? Well, we, we lost 200 Ghanaians in one single incident uh, uh, at the flooding at uh, Circle last year. One would have thought the authorities <coughs> would have then uh, done a thorough scientific investigation do all the fact-finding, and come up with a comprehensive report. And then w the report would have revealed what really caused that disaster. Then we would have then uh, started putting interventions in place to stop it from happening again. But what do we see? It, the, uh, it was only the, the, what do you call it, the benevolence of Ibrahim Mahama last year that went ahead and uh, distilled the Od Odona uh, River, we are told. But... After that, after that distilling, what else has been put in place? Nothing. We're just waiting for the, 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 the June 3rd to come and the disaster to hit us again and kill over 200 Ghanaians again. I mean, it, it's beyond my comprehension that as a people, we will sit around doing nothing. I mean, have, have you heard any, 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 anything about the report, that were, uh, the committee that were, was put in place last year to look into what was the causes of that disaster. If we know the causes, then we will do something about it. But if we don't know the causes, what are, what are we going to do? We just wait and for the, the rains, and the rains are here again. But then the, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly says it's doing enough, even though it's not outlined what it's doing yet. It says it's doing a lot, you know, under the carpet to ensure it doesn't but, happen again. But you do what is it? That, uh, tell me, I mean, you, you are the journalist. Take, uh, uh, send your, your, your men out there and uh, find out from uh, Mr. Dr. Oko Van der Poy. What has it done? What intervention? What preventative inter uh, program have you put in place? For, we have done what, what has it, have you done? He's, what he's saying is done, or he's out outlining that he's done since. Is it doing them in his bedroom that we can't see? I mean, for crying out loud, Dr. Oko Van der Poy, has been a big, big failure. If it's not for serving his master or his appointor, I don't think he's serving, he's serving, he's serving Ghanaians. He's been a mayor coming close, or, or, or um, he calls himself a mayor, though he, uh, he was not elected as a mayor. He's an MCE, and he claims to be a mayor. What is it that Dr. Oko Van der Poy have done in the last seven, eight, going to eight years? to deserve to be in, in office again. Now he's, he's moving from, from pillar to post. He wants to become uh, a, a parliamentarian to, to, to make laws for us or to represent who, who is he going to represent? Is he going to represent himself again in parliament? Because the good people of Accra, who I'm also a resident, he has not done us any favors whatsoever. So why does he want, also want to move from uh, 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 being uh, the MCU of Accra to become a parliamentarian. Well, Nana, well, it, 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 we know that, uh, of course, from all indications, the, the, there's much to uh, to be done by the authorities. But it's not only the authorities' obligation to prepare, because this is indeed very risky to us residents. What should we do as residents? No, but uh, you see, what should you do? We have leaders, we have people. I mean, to all intents and purposes, you're doing your job as a journalist. I'm doing my job and everybody else is doing. We have people who we are, we've tasked them to do what is right for us because we cannot do everything. You're not jack of all trades. So there are people who have been assigned to do the right thing, collect all the refuse and make sure that they dispose them if the odona, that is a cause of the, of the flooding, have to be distilled. Who, is it you and I who, is going to, who are going to distill the odona? Somebody has to do his job. And all these people are sleeping on their job. And then now I heard the, 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 uh, when the, in, the, in your previous interview that they are sensitizing the people. Sensitizing the people for what? Is it me who am going to go out there and, and dispel the Odona River? Well, Nana, it looks like we have found an fix. It's now become the situation of each one for himself and God for us all. So, as an individual, what can I do in my own small way to prevent you know, some of these uh, disasters? Well, you know, you know it, uh, to educate the public, I mean, we can, we, we can, in our own small way, ensure that we don't throw garbage uh, about the, the things that will cause uh, flooding. 
we desist from doing them. I mean, putting things in gutters and whatever. But these are things that we've, we've studied time and time again. That the people are, are even, uh, la, la, for two weeks, my garbage has not been picked up. When I, uh, we, we call the people, the vehicle has broken down and, and blah, blah, blah. So if you don't, where do I dispose of my garbage? Uh, if I, uh, uh, should I go and throw my garbage in the, in, in the gutters? I mean, it's push come to shove. That's what one has to do. But that is not what we are paying our taxes, and we are engaging people, giving them all the luxury, driving V8 uh, about and living in bungalows, everything paid for, and then they're not doing what they're supposed to do. But Ghanaians are not angry, because if we are angry, we will not sit around time and time again and allow Dr. Oko van der Poy, all the things that he's doing, and then he comes and when you want him, he, he, he's running away. I mean, he's created a lot of uh, 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 menace around, uh, 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 during his tenure. But when you want him to, to uh, uh, probe him and, and uh, interrogate him, you, you, he will not be there to answer your question. Okay, now let's do this analysis. Um, immediately after the June 3 disaster, uh, we saw the Odo River being uh, cleared. And then we, we saw the mayor going to the Sodom and Gomorrah slum to sack all the people there. I mean, to him, we are prepared for the rains this year. Are we safe? Well, until, until we, we, we do the right things and ensure that those things, I mean, as, as I'm talking to you, we don't even know what actually caused the, the, the flooding last year. Until we know what caused the flooding last year, then you will be doing something about it. I mean, I mean uh, uh, in safety, we say that uh, I, I, when these things happen, you do a scientific investigation and you unravel uh, 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 the facts. Then once you, you have the facts, then you can do something. But as, as we, I speak to you, if you ask me what can we do, I, I, I'm bereft of ideas because I don't even know what actually caused. So we only conjecture that it could be this, it could be that, it could be that. That, that is not how you, you, you do things. You must actually put your finger to what the causes are then you can do something about it. So it means we are not safe as a country as the we rain We are not safe. I mean, well, if, if the rains come again, you, you, you'll be, you, we'll all be here. I mean, we always think that it, it will, the, 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 the thing uh, is on somebody else's uh, foot. But when you, you lose a member of your family, and then, then you would also be uh, very concerned. But when somebody else loses a loved one, nobody cares. As you uh, rightly said, each one for himself, God for us all. But my answer is that we are paying people. We are paying people and giving them all the luxury to do, to take decisions and do the right things to safeguard our safety. That nobody cares uh, uh, in, in this uh, modern, Ghana, modern Ghana that we are in. Well, many thanks to Nana Amir is a safety expert. We're extremely grateful for your time on today's big story. Let's continue to listen to some of the victims from the flat scene last year who still feel that uh, it's fresh in their minds, especially if they see the rings. Said, I told him that so far as you are alive, you will give thanks to God if you are having dead. Did you get injured that day? Did oh. you get hurt or injured? Oh, no, 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 I didn't get injured, but it, it was the water, it was like, like I would I, I like to die in the water. That's what makes me afraid. Okay, so from that time till now, how has your life been? Have you changed the way you do things? Where you go, when it's raining, what happens to you? Yeah, it was something like that. It is raining now, I again to be afraid of when it's raining, it will be flood again. So I don't think like if it's raining, I will not think that if it started raining, I'll find some some place where the rain will, it will not worry me so that I'll be safe on my life. Just when I was leaving John, I saw Joyce Lynn. She was until recently a night seller of noodles close to the Goyle filling station. She has now switched 
to selling banku and okra soup during the day. She sends us back to the night when her decision not to sell saved her from calamity. Well, when the thing happened, I was not having money to start. I've stayed in the house for almost, let's say, six or seven months. And moreover, I'm afraid if something happened again, I don't want to sell in the night again. I want to do something daytime. When I finished selling Indomie, I went out. So I came home around 5, 5 p.m. So I was going to market to buy Indomie, and the rain started small, small. I said, oh, this rain, let me sleep so that tomorrow I can go to morning devotion. Then we saw that the back of our house was burning. I said, what is happening? Before the Philly station, go blasted like bomb. My sister said, Joyce, all of us will die. By then she climbed the wall, I was in the water. The things, we have fridge, like four fridge in the compound. I wanted to climb the wall, but everything blocked me. So I just asked, I asked for, for forgiveness of my sin. I know about me, so I said, go, if I should die, I just take my soul. Every sin I've committed, you just forgive me. I asked for forgiveness of my sin. I was there. Something just said, okay, but I would die. So let me just make it simple. Let me just go under the water and die. Something said no. But I don't know what carried me. Before, I, what I realized is I was where my sister was. What I could remember was she was pulling me to climb the wall. I said, no, she should leave me. I will find. When I climbed the wall, I was naked. One man was coming from Adabrakai side. And just come and stood beside me. I said, brother, can you please help me? He said, yes. I said, are you sure? He said, yes. So should I jump inside? Then I jumped and he took me outside. And I said, come and take my sister. So he came, and she, he came back and take my sister too. When I came out, I was naked. Those guys, junkie, they were holding my bottles. They were holding me. But that day, my, where my mind was, I just thank God that I survived. Considering what happened here last year, what do you think has to change to avoid something like that repeating itself? Every day, the gutter is full. That is the... That's the biggest problem. Yes. Okay. But who puts the filth in the gutter? It's all of you, isn't it? Yes, it's true. But we have, uh, like, what me I think is, like, the governments, like, Saturdays like this, who organize something that the youth should clean the gutter. After finish doing that, they should dash them something. The next day, when they announce, they will come because of what they have received. Mm -hmm. So those were bitter memories from last year's disaster. But experts are saying that authorities like AMA and NADMO can do much to avert a recurrence this year. Plus you and I can do a lot to avert a recurrence. This is today's Big Story. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Good evening.